Greetings, everyone. I'm Steve Kelly, Senior CMMI Consultant with Theris. We're here today to talk about the practice areas and how they interact on CMMI. Again, if you uh, don't have a good abbreviation or know about the abbreviations from CMMI, get your book out, follow along. Here we go. So on the practice areas, there's a lot of interactions. The practices themselves will, are able to do the processes, they're able to, to do the work within themselves, but there's also a lot of interaction. So we're gonna talk about the interaction of the practice areas, the core practice areas of CMMI. So first we're gonna talk about we're going to look at this first box and this, and again, the abbreviations, we have monitoring and control, MC, and then we have the estimating, and then we have planning. So those are the three practice areas. And then sometimes, or oftentimes, we'll have risk. And the reason I have these in, these, in this box up top is a lot of this has to do with the PMs, and the BAs. So they pretty much control and manage the projects as we go along with it. This next section we're gonna talk about is really from the developer side. So software engineers, developers, uh, DBAs, enterprise architects, all of those will be working a lot within these practice areas. So the first one is requirements development and management. This is where your RTM, requirements traceability matrix will come into play. The RDM will feed into technical solution. Technical solution is where the design takes place, the design of the product, design of what you're delivering. The next one is product engineering or product integration, excuse me. So product integration will take the design, develop the product, and to test it, it'll go through verification and validation, another practice area. So you have technical solution to product integration, and you could do verification and validation as you're doing both of those. The final, once the product integration is complete, then it goes into the practice area of configuration management. All of this, if you take it from the delivery of a product, you have the managing piece, you have the developing piece, and this all goes to your customer. Customer being internal, external, or whatever. So that's, those two go together. Now, on the back side of this from CMMI, there's a lot of other practice areas that are going on. And again, these in, intrinsic work together. They work to complement each other, but yet they're standalone processes. So what we're going to look at first uh, in the middle here is called managing performance and management. And this is what I call the hub of really of all the CMMI 17 core practice areas. This is where you're managing the performance side. And you're also getting the measurements from all of your projects, from all your deliverables, and also some, from some of your quality assurance that you're doing. The next one down is the peer review. And the peer reviews often come in play when doing maybe a, a large estimate or putting a plan together. You could do peer reviews on your requirements as you're putting your requirements together. So peer reviews also act in a lot of other ways. You could do peer reviews on uh, guidebooks or user manuals. You could do peer reviews, on, peer reviews on training and training materials. So peer reviews is used in a lot of areas. <clears throat> the next one is called cause analysis and resolution. Uh, you can think of causes analysis and resolution, that practice area as a root cause analysis. You could also even call it RCA, root cause analysis. And a lot of times those get interacted not only with the peer reviews, but may interact a lot with, uh, from the product integration and the configuration management when things go south and you have to go back and fix it. A lot of emphasis on that. And then the last one in this, this section is called DAR, Decision Analysis and Resolution. From the DAR side, this is where you want to make a decision. You'll show how it's resolved and you'll show how you went through the analysis to come up with that solution. That could be anything from the, a design perspective within the engineering side. It could be a DAR that you want to come up with a new tool to track. A DAR could be used to uh, maybe disseminate between different contracts, which contract and what the process is that you use to use DAR. So many different ways to use DAR. And again, they all interact with each other. So there's all, again, they're all interconnected. 
on the very top of this is the governance. And this is where senior leadership, the sponsors, all of that actually have a dashboard and they can kind of see the entire process that's being going on from a CMMI initiative down to the project level and the resource level. This is where budgets are aligned, where we also have resources identified and then uh, usually monthly meetings that go back to the governance, to the senior leadership to see how this is all being implemented. The next section next to it is called impl implementation infrastructure, which is another practice area. And it kind of oversees the entire realm of all the practices. It's not really a mandatory appraisal, but from an appraisal standpoint, this will take and say, are we doing everything that we're supposed to be doing according to the model? So these kind of go hand in hand. And again, a lot of times we'll see measurements out of the MPM feed into Gov, the Gov practice area. This last section is PAD, which stands for Process Asset Development. And on the PAD side, this is where we develop the processes. We develop a swim lane, put in the process descriptions. There may be templates that go in these, other artifacts that have to be captured or used. This is in the PAD area. The next one is, and, and CMMI calls this PM, but it's really PCM, which stands for Process Change Management. So anytime, and CMMI is all about process improvement. Anytime there's a process improvement that has to take place, it typically goes through your PCM or PM area. And then the last one in this area is process of quality assurance. So from the process quality assurance side, we're making sure that what we're putting out meets the performance of the practice area and also meets the performance of the process improvement areas. And then this last box, very crucial, is organizational training. That practice area ties in directly with many, actually all the practices, because you've got to train your organization on all these practices, how to use it, how to institute it in the, in the company, and then how to collect objective evidence for your appraisal. You can, so what we've given you is the 19 practice areas. Um, what we use for this illustration is the 17 core practice areas, and then these two practice areas, technical solution and product integration, are actually from the development domain. And all the others are the 17 core practice areas that are required for uh, entry level two on up. So there you have it, big interaction between all of these. Again, they all interact with each other from all different aspects of it. OT goes to everywhere. So thank you for watching and attending. If you have any questions, by all means, reach out to theorist.com. We have to answer your questions and uh, do any brainstorming with you that's needed.